to do that. Ten o'clock. Where are they? It's only women. I'm so Sorry. bad at doing no. these things. <laughs> yeah, because it's a woman I'm giving it. Only women anyway. I'm just trying to get this straight. How do I out. share this? How do I share a group, Lauren? You're the technology expert here. Where do I push? Like invite Rabbi Cohen to you? Yeah. Okay, give me the phone. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Just give it to me. Okay, go ahead. But if you teach her Okay, so uh, once again, for those of you who didn't take a picture of that, we're starting September 1st, God willing, in Practical Tanya. This is volume two. It's thinner, so it's probably less expensive. Okay? Then, oh, there, there you go. Okay. So, uh, and if you can't, don't worry. We will not make copies of this, but we'll make the standard copies that you can get off the internet, you know, to provide if you uh, a person. Okay, so so at least there'll be a text, okay? Now we have to get into chapter 29. This is a cool chapter, but it's full of a lot of stuff, okay? Um, let me just pass down these sheets. Twenty-ninth introduction. Here we go. I do have a I have a pen. Here. Don't worry, I have plenty. I have a whole pencil case. Are these ours too? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. The 29th introduction. This is got to be some things that maybe you have heard of, maybe you haven't. Okay, once again. Here, the 29th introduction in Shar Hagil Gulim in the Gates of, of Reincarnation. Okay, and it's talking about actually uh, Adam Arishon, and most specifically, we're going to get into Cain and Abel, who are Cain and Abel. Okay, let me just. All right, here we are. Okay. So it, as it is known, had Adam HaRishon, that means the first man in the Garden of Eden, who was created on day six, that was Rosh Hashanah, right? Mm -hmm. We're getting to Rosh Hashanah. Day six of creation, right? His Rosh Hashanah. Had Adam HaRishon, who was created on day six, waited until Shabbos night to procreate with Chava, the worlds would have become rectified. So here we have a kind of statement of what are you talking about, Rabbi, okay? We all understand and everybody knows that what happened in the Garden of Eden was that there was this tree of knowledge of good and evil and they were commanded not to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they did, of course, and then okay, everything fell into a whole spiral <coughs> downwards. Here he's, interesting, he's introducing a concept that maybe you haven't been familiar with, which is basically of they had relations. They had relations on Friday afternoon. Okay? That's what it says here. Okay? So if Adam or Rishon would have held back from having relations on that day, and, and so, so, so the question is, when I thought this, I'm like, I, I'm familiar with this in several places in the writings of the Arizal, and it led to a little confusion here. So what are we asking? saying? Was the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil having relations? Or was that on top of it, and why was that a problem, right? Mm -hmm. What's the issue here? What happened, okay? So I had to look in one of the source places that he brings down from another book of the Ari uh, called Shar HaKavanot, Gates of, I guess, uh, Intentions. And he quotes there on Rosh Hashanah, actually, Drush Aleph in Rosh Hashanah when he talks about that. So he brings down a language of if he would have held back from having relations and also from the sin. So eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil is not relations. It's something else. Instantly I thought about it, right? Of uh, Chazal that actually he brought down, which was basically what happened is Adam Rishon, the serpent, saw Adam and Chava actually having relations. The serpent desired Chava. And then that's where the serpent made his move to go ahead and start a conversation with her. Right? Can I buy you a drink? Okay. <laughs> right? 
so wait a minute, they were, he saw them having relations and that was kosher, and yet what happened? Then the, then the serpent moved in to try to entice Chava. To, and then afterwards they ate from the tree of knowledge. So relations first and then tree of knowledge. So wait a minute, what was wrong? So what this is intimating that having the relations was not good. So right? was that the sin? Actually, so he, under, he explains here, okay, that there was a, they were having relations before the sin, and that was called a spiritual intimacy. That was a ruchani, a zivag ruchani, a joining, a connecting, a spiritual connection. Like what we call, actually, he equates to the connection of the neshamos in the Garden of Eden, the souls in the Garden of Eden. In the middle of the night, there's a whole gathering in the spiritual realms of all of the righteous people in the Garden of Eden, okay? Every midnight, okay? So it's a different kind of soul connection. And that was the kind of soul connection that Adam was having, okay? With his, with his wife. But then, of course, what happened... Then the, he brings down here, I'm just going to give you the language that you don't have in your text, okay? But if he would have waited until Shabbos evening to have relations, then all of the worlds would have been fixed, like we have uh, in many places where we, we have explained concerning the sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden. But, because he sinned by the advice, through the advice of the serpent, him and his wife, and the Nachash came onto Chava. This is the language that it brings. Have you heard this before? The Nachash actually came. The language is Bo al Chava. Came Chava. into Chava. Chava is Eve. So the Nachash, the serpent, it l- appears to that he had relations with Chava. But it's not so because I've heard mo- many commentators say it's not literal. Okay? But whatever it is, the idea. He cast, and it came into Chava, ba Zuhama, and he cast into her what we call the Zuhama. And how do we call it Zuhama? I don't know any other word besides Shmutz. Okay? Mm. Shmutz is dirt. Okay? But it's obviously a spiritual dirt. Okay? So he cast into Chava this Shmutz. Okay? Kodim Shinizdavu Gadam Chava. Before Adam had relations with Chava. Before. In other words, listen. So in other words, they had relations. That was a spiritual. That was good. And then the serpent saw them having this kind of connection. And he says, whoa, I want that. So then he did his design, his whole plan. Convinced them to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which they did. And then they had relations again. Physical. Yeah. Okay? And that was the problem. In other words, the first time they had relations wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. It was after the serpent injected into Eve this schmutz, and then they had relations the second time, right? That was the problem. Okay? And because of this came out Cain and Abel after the zivug of Adam and Eve, mixed with good and evil. Okay? I think we have that in the text. Okay? The idea here is, obviously this is a huge throw into the whole network idea of everybody's idea of what happened in the Garden of Eden, and obviously what happened was it was more than just eating a piece of fruit, okay? Mm-hmm. One thing you get out of this, there was more going on in the Garden of Eden. However, since he did not wait, Cain and Abel was born with a mixture of good and evil, as we will explain, okay? Furthermore, had Cain, the firstborn, not sinned, right? Meaning he didn't kill his brother. Mm-hmm. Then he and his twin sister would have been like Chochmo and Bina. And Hevel and his twin sister, should have been sisters, like Tiferes and Malchus. Where did they get twins? Sisters? Ah! Oh. Ah! You know, even before. before I was very religious, for some reason I was like, you know, my dad at the bookshelf, I pulled out a Bible, me and my, me and my friend were looking through it. Picked up a Bible, first chapter. 
right? Reading it. Cain married this person, married and had kids. I'm like going, whoa, 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 whoa. Adam and Eve, that's two. <laughs> yeah. Who would they marry? Yeah, Cain and Abel, that's two. Where'd the wives come from? Right. Yeah. Even then I had the question. Thank God oral tradition says they were, in order to keep, you know, God in his unbelievable love and how to go ahead and effect a plan for populating the world, they were born with twin sisters. And their twin sisters were their wives. I know it's kind of risky here. They Where are you going, Rabbi? This is how it was. was the mentality. What? Ah. Two sisters ah. each? Ah. ah, ah, good. So, just to backtrack a little bit. Cain was born with one twin. That was your destined wife, and you're going to have babies. Abel was born with two twin sisters. Right? And what happened was that Cain says, well, I'm the, the firstborn, I get a double portion, so that other twin is mine, so I have two wives. <laughs> okay. That was the whole idea, but the fight between Cain and Abel, according to the Zohar. Mm. Because if you'll really look in the passages, it's a very strange language. It says, and Cain was speaking with Abel about the field, in the field. And then all of a sudden, then Cain rose up and killed Abel. It didn't say what they were speaking about. It was called the field. The field is like the woman you plant the seeds and have children. Okay? So he's speaking about that the dialogue was that extra wife that Abel was born with that Cain field that should go to me because double portion and that's how it goes. And Abel says, she was born with me, Whitey. <laughs> okay? That means it's mine. Right? You know? If you were born with two, okay. You weren't born with two, you were born with one twin. I was born with two. That's the way it goes. Okay? That was what the fight was about. And that's when Cain killed Abel. Because he wanted the extra twin. Okay? <laughs> so they impregnate all the twins? <laughs> no, he didn't get that twin. He didn't get the other twin either. He lost everything. What about his original twin? He got his own wife, yeah. But you're not going to get that. You know, you kill him over that, and that's sorry. This is not happening. Okay, so had Cain, the firstborn, not sinned, then he and his twin sister would have been like Chachma and Bina. These are cosmic energies, cosmic influences in the world. Chachma and Bina, as relate to in, in the Kabbalistic doctrine, these are the highest spherot of the ten spherot, and they represent energies, cosmic energies, and an expression of those cosmic energies here in this world. In other words, Chachma and Bina would have been tremendous, you know, expression of wisdom, that's what Chachma means, and Bina, understanding. They would have been unbelievable beacons of light in the world. And Hevel and his twin sister would be like Teferis and Malchus. Teferis and Malchus are lower on the chart of the, on the ten spherot. Teferis is like Yaakov Avinu, as we're going to see. Malchus is the lowest of the ten spherot. So wisdom and understanding are like in the top three. They're the mental spherot. Tiferet and Malchus, those are the lower spherot. Okay? So Cain would have been way up here had he not sinned. Mm. Right? And Hevel would have been down there. Okay? A lower level of expression, of cosmic expression. Okay? Later in history... Esav and Yaakov were like Cain and Hevel. Okay? In this aspect. Not totally. We talked about who Cain and who Esav and Yaakov were. It brings down in another place that we discussed, I think, in the last class, right? Really, we said Esav was the serpent and Yaakov was Adam and it was really Adam versus the serpent, round two. That whole thing with the blessings. Okay? But here we're looking at it in a kind of a different dynamic, a different expression. Okay, like, and he's going to explain it, okay? Later in history, Esav and Yaakov were like Cain and Abel. And had Esav been righteous, he would have surpassed Yaakov because the firstborn is from Chachma, wisdom, and Yaakov was from Tiferes, which is beauty, okay, or balance, okay? This is kind of interesting. I don't know if you've ever just had talked about this before. But, you know, we, we say, basically, uh, classically, we say that the evil inclination does not enter into a person until they are born. Okay? Until they're born. Before they're born, there's no evil inclination. Right? Yet, 
The issue was, if you remember, Rebecca, Rivka, right? She was pregnant. After many years, she's born to Yitzchak. She was pregnant. And she would go by a synagogue, and all of a sudden, one of the babies, one of, she didn't know there was two babies. She thought there was one baby. They were fighting. Right? They were, they were, well, she would go by a synagogue, and all of a sudden, you know, the, the baby would rush to come out. And then she'd go by a, a, a house of idolatry, and all of a sudden, there'd be a rush. She says, well, there's, I got a schizo in here. He likes uh, holiness, or he likes tuma. Tuma means, like, defilement. What, what is he after? And then she finally she went to inquire, and in and, and shame, the prophet told her that there's two kids in there. Right? Two kids, great. One, and also then things made sense to some degree. But the idea here is, wait a minute, two kids, what is it? One is a wicked and one is, a, one is righteous? No, you can't, you can't say that. Because the evil inclination doesn't enter a person until they're born. Before they're born, there's no evil inclination. So what's this idea when she goes by a house of idolatry that Asav is rushing to come out? Think about this. You get the question? So what is the idea here? And it's really, really big. And it actually plays into what, where we're right now in history, bizarre as it sounds. Mm-hmm. Service of God it come, is in two forms. How to serve God how to do your tikkun here. We've been discussing this for a long time. In the Hebrew, it's called surmei ra v'yase tov. King David brings it down. Surmei ra means desist from evil. You got to deal with the bad stuff. You got to pull out the weeds from your garden. And ase tov, do good, means you got to plant good seeds. Right? It's not just just plant good seeds because you're going to have weeds. and good. Right? And you can't just pluck the weeds because then you're just going to have a nice little field there with nothing. You have to plant, uproot the weeds, and do good. Service of God is in two forms. Right? Desist from evil and do good. Asaph, his original potential was to be the person to eradicate evil in the world. A holy purpose. Have you ever heard this before? His potential was to be the police of the world, the police force eradicating idolatry from the world in his righteous potential. Okay? It happened, though. You know, I think, I don't know when the wickedness came into him because we do have a a statement from our wise men that on the way out, when he was being born, he reached in and he did something to Rivka that she couldn't have any more children. Okay? So... You know, maybe when his head was out, his feet did something. I don't know what. Okay? But they say that he fixed his mother that she wouldn't have any kids anymore. But in any case, the potential of Asaph is was to be the police force of the world, knocking out all, you know, whatever you call evil. Uprooting the weeds, right? No more idolatry, no more crime, no stealing. Everything's going to be straight, right? I thought you said he was the serpent. No, yes, true. Okay, Kurdish. The potential, the potential was there. Look what happened with Leah. You remember we talked about Leah. Leah was the wife of the serpent, reincarnated, right? And she didn't want to marry Asaph because he was the serpent. He was the head of the. He was the right, godfather. Right, right, right. She didn't want to be married to the godfather, right? So she cried and cried and cried. That's why her eyes were full of tears. Her, her, you know, because of the crying, she didn't want to marry that guy, and therefore she was able to jump fence and marry Yaakov. Right. So Asaph also could have jumped fence. The serpent could have jumped fence. Okay. Okay. However, he didn't. He became Asaph wicked. So the idea really here is, had Asaph, right? Had Asaph not sinned, he would have been a tremendous force in the world, a tremendous influence in the world. Okay, now Asaph does do tshuva. I somebody gave a source from that um, Kesson. There's a rabbi Kesson. He's in New Jerusalem. He gave a talk, and he and it's known that Yishmael does tshuva, which I don't know how. Okay, that's like going to be a real wild one. I'm talking about in the world. Asaph repents. I mean, Ishmael repents is known. It's in our whole, it's in the Bible. Okay, they recognized Yitzchak as being 
from Avraham. Eventually, there's some going to be some kind of flip. Esav, however, he, Rabbi Kessin does bring down also his true hearted intentions will manifest and make effect a rectification, okay? And does do tshuva, okay? We kind of see that now, okay? Um, so anyways, however, since Ace of sinned, the right of the firstborn was taken from him, and Yaakov received a double portion, his own and that of his brother. In other words, when Yaakov got the blessings from Yitzchak, when he went in, he dressed up as Esau, and he got in, when he got those blessings, those blessings was, you have not only your job, what was Yaakov's original job? Do good. Plant good seeds. Now you got his job because he blew it. Okay? He blew it, so now his holy mission, which was to eradicate evil in the world, is now your job too. So now you have not only to do good, you have to also eradicate evil. And that's why Yaakovino, as soon as he got the blessings, he had to go out to Lavan. Because he had to go out into the world and conquer it and defeat evil. Okay? So he had a double mission. Okay? And Esav was left with no mission. Okay? What was his sin? Esav? Yeah. Well, I really started on his bar mitzvah day. Okay. <laughs> you remember his bar mitzvah day? Uh, his bar mitzvah day, he was very busy. I think what happened, he, um, he, he, he murdered someone, actually, who was betrothed to this girl, lived with the girl, right? I don't know, maybe he lived with the girl first and then murdered the, 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 the uh, what do you call it, the groom. The husband did and then and, and committed idolatry. So he did all three of the worst sins day on, on his bar mitzvah day. <laughs> Today I'm a fountain pen? No, not for him, okay? So, you know, it was like some bar mitzvah that is, okay? On his bar mitzvah day, actually, Avram died. God took Avram out of the world five years earlier that Avram, Avram would not see his grandson become a, do, be a wicked monster, turn into a monster on his bar mitzvah day, okay? So that's why it was also the mourning day of his grandfather, mm-hmm. and that's why he came in and in the lentils. Why were there lentils? Lentils is a mourner's food. So give me the food. I want the, the give me. I'm starving. I had a busy day, raping and killing and, and uh, doing idolatry. I was thinking it was that is when he allowed himself to be so out of sorts that he gave up his birthright. Well, yeah, I mean that was it because he he understand that the birthright was basically all firstborns at that period of time until the sin of the golden calf. All firstborns were designated as family priest. Mm-hmm. That was the system at the time. In other words, every household who had a firstborn, that was the priest of the house. Okay? So they get to work in the temple. Technically, if there would be a temple and the firstborn didn't ruin it by the sin of the golden calf, right? They would have, every single household would have had their, you know, household priest. It's, like, it's great. You have a doctor. <laughs> right? yeah, somebody's always a doctor in the family. Right? It's great. You have a priest in the, in the house, right? So Except of course, if a girl was first born. Yeah, if a girl was first born, okay, it wouldn't didn't count. Didn't didn't count. Okay, maybe so. wise and brilliant, nonetheless, more but brilliant, but the system was the priests. Okay? In any case, he knew that. He knew that. And he knew what Avram's prophecy was that the priests of the family, whoever's gonna take on the spiritual leader, leadership is gonna have to go into exile for four hundred years. He knew that. They all knew it. It was passed down in the family. So he didn't want it. So he says, forget that. Mm. You know, I'll sell my birthright because that would mean me going to exile for 400 years. I don't feel like that. Mm-hmm. So I'll definitely sell it. So pour the lentils, pour away. He opened his mouth, pour in. Some people say it was raw lentils. Just, I'm hungry <laughs> now. Okay? <sighs> okay, so anyways. Therefore, Yaakov corresponds to Teferis. That means beauty, a lower sphere. Whereas Yisrael corresponds to Hachma. That's why Yaakov got two names. Tiferes, which was his own job. Aseto, be good. And Hachma, the higher level, was Yisrael corresponds to that job, which Esav was supposed to get, but didn't get in the end. And this is the meaning of Yitzchak loved Esav and his, tra- and, and his trappings were in his mouth. 
That is, he understood Esau's phenomenal potential and wanted to bring it out. Because he realized Esau's got tremendous potential to be a huge police force in the world, knocking out all idolatry, no matter what it is, all evil, no more stealing, no more corruption. Can you imagine that there would be a force in the world like that? Um, can you imagine that? that we're going to move from country to country do an audit to make sure everything's kosher. Your leaders stink? Well, we're going to remove that and we're going to take care of it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Okay? As we have said, mm-hmm. because Adam sinned Erev Shabbat Friday, which was Rosh Hashanah, the snake was able to impart Zuhama to Chava, that means the filth, the schmutz, bad influence, Nachava, and this resulted in Cain and Abel being born with good and evil combined within them. However, there was a difference between them, Cain and Abel, and it was that Cain was mostly evil, whereas Hevel was mostly good. Okay, so it's not an equal 50-50 mixture. Okay? Cain obviously got more evil. I don't you know. Sometimes we just don't understand, you know? But good things come from Cain, right? The most creativity comes from Cain and his descendants, okay? So Cain was mostly evil, whereas Hevel was mostly good. And what does that mean? And then he's going to explain it right now. This means that the nefesh, ruach, neshama, that's what neuron means. Mm-hmm. Nefesh, ruach, neshama, that means level one, two, and three of Cain was from, here we got more jargon. You got to be up on your jargon. If not, we'll just remind you. Bia of Kedusha. Bia of Kedusha means Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. Do I call that an, an acronym, right? Rashi Tevot. Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya are the lower worlds. Don't forget, in, in, we have in Kabbalah, there are four basic realms, four dimensions. From the highest, closest to the infinite light is the world of Atzilut, or we call that nearness, or Atzilut, emanation. Then you'll have below that a dimension called Bria, or creation. You'll have below that a dimension called Yitzira, formation. And below that you have Asiya, making. Now he says here, Kayan, the Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama, meaning levels 1, 2, and 3, came from those lower worlds of Kedusha. Okay, that's important to say it, of Kedusha. I taught last week in last week's class that Hashem made every single thing a corresponding counterpart. Every single thing in creation has a corresponding counterpart. That means on the side of holiness, there, there is these realms, dimensions. Also on the side of darkness, there is the same realms. The spherot of holiness, there's ten spherot of holiness, and then there's ten spherot of the dark side, okay? <laughs> so, the idea really here is Cain was from the side of holiness, in these, his levels of his soul came from the side of holiness. So it says here in the note here, his nefesh was from Asiya, his ruach was from Yitzira, and his neshama was from Bria, all from the side of Kedusha. And that these three, all three of them, became mixed together with the nefesh, ruach, and neshama of the klipos. Okay? Meaning the dark side, the shells. In other words, all of those three became mixed with shells, external ideologies, external forces, external influences. Okay? However, though like Kain, his nefesh, ruach, and neshama was also from Bia of Kedusha, only the nefesh and ruach of Hevel became intermingled with the klipos. Thus his neshama remained completely good without a trace of evil. Okay, so if I can get a chart here. Can I borrow that pen for a second? Here we go. Okay, so we'll go like this. We'll call this making, formation, and uh, creation. And we'll call this nearness. So we have here... 
okay? Cain and Abel. So Cain had three levels of ruach, of neshama, nefesh, ruach, and neshama, okay? Right. Also, Hevel has nefesh, ruach, and a neshama, okay? So here, the, we'll call it the nefesh, ruach, and neshama, Okay, so each one has three layers of soul. Okay, so for Cain, that's here, all of these had a mixture of evil in them. In other words, this level had a mixture of evil, this level of soul, and this level of soul. Hevel, on the other hand, only had this and this level of evil mixed with it, his nefesh and his ruach, but not his neshama. So his neshama was totally from the side of Kedusha, of holiness, okay? So you see here, Kain, he's got the dice rolled for him in a different way that Hevel does, okay? So is... Yeah. Send back? <coughs> yeah. Or is it more predominantly that there's an admixture in the lower three for most persons? Yes. And seldom yes. there's one... Nefesh is always like, you know, it's like your feet. It's the closest to the dirt, right? <laughs> Right? So you get a, what a, you know, no such thing, you know, right? So a dirty broom is always going to have dirt, even though you're used for cleaning. You, get, you, you want to fix, but the lowest part, the top part of the broom uh, has less dirt. Okay? Yes, always a propensity for the lower parts to get intermingled with the klipot. The klipot are the husks, literally means husks realms of evil in external influences, okay? External motivations, all kinds of things, okay? So, so, so by Hevel, we say his neshama remained completely good without a trace of evil. So here we have the rundown of who, why Cain has all three are, have an admixture of good and evil, but Abel only has his lower two levels, not his highest level of soul. And this is what it means to be mostly good and partially evil. The three components of both sides are not equal. In the case of Cain, on all three on both sides were mixed together. At this point, we will no longer discuss Cain's Gilgalim and will instead explain the Gilgalim, which means the reincarnations of Hevel, his brother. Okay, the Gilgalim of Hevel. As we already know, the Ruach cannot reincarnate until the Nefesh has done so and been rectified. Okay, this is talking about a case where, one second. Just got to, uh, right. Kol zeim lo tikein et the nefesh ruach neshama v'pam rishona. All of this is if you did not fix your, all your three levels of your soul in the first time you came. And we learn here, technically, that if you didn't fix all your three levels of soul the first time you came, right? So then each one has to come back on a separate reincarnation, okay? Then when the, okay, so we already know the Ruach cannot reincarnate until the Nefesh has, has done so and has been rectified. When the Ruach itself has been rectified, then the Neshama will then undergo rectification. So it has to be one, two, and three. In Hevel's case, though, the Nefesh and Ruach were damaged and mixed together with evil. His Neshama remained completely good. Thus, when his Nefesh reincarnated, it first went into Shase, who's the son of Adam Harishon. As we know that Shase was born after Adam separated from his wife for 120 years. Right? It says there he gave birth to his own likeness and kind. Shase, of course, now here right, most specifically, was the good part, the good aspect of heaven. Okay? This caused the evil to be separated out when he came back, which was later given to Bilaam, Bilaam Harasha. Okay? So in other words, what happened was, Hevel has an admixture of his lower part of his nefesh. Now, in order to fix it, what happens? We're going to give birth to Shase. Shase is cleaned, okay? And therefore, since Shase remained righteous, so that aspect of the evil part 
uh, the admixture of Hevel, of Nefesh, of Hevel, had to be born into somebody for a Tikkun, because everything's got to get fixed, right? And so where did he get born into? Bilam. Okay, as we know, the story of Bilam, he was the anti-Moses. He, his level of prophecy was on a level of prophecy equal, to, as a matter of fact, a little edge up over Moses. Okay? Talk to God. Very high level. Okay, both of these levels, the good and the evil of the Nefesh, had previously been included in Hevel. As his name alludes. How does his name allude to it? With the hay of Hevel, alluding to the good, which was given to Shays. And this is the soda of the puffet, Pasuk. Everything you placed, Shata, under his feet. Okay? And the hill, Kol Shasa, Tachas Raglav. Kol Shasa, if you spell out the word Shasa, placed, actually, is Shata, they wrote it here, is Shin, Tuf, and a Hey. Okay? So the verse in Tehillim, basically here, it alludes to the letters of Shate, Shin, Tuf, and Hey are Shate, Hey. Okay? So it's an allusion to Shate being having the Hey of Hevel, which is the Tikkun of Hevel, which is the good of Hevel. Okay? We have already explained that this psalm is about Moshe, whom it says, Yet you have made him only slightly less than angels. Moshe actually is known to be was a, a completely transformed individual, half angel, half God. Or half man, half God. Moshe? Moshe. Okay? Because it says here, right? Right? You made him just a little bit less than a god. <coughs> that was Moshe, how he transformed it. was transformed. It's known that, you know, Moshe got all the 50 gates of, of understanding, Bina, right? All of them were given to Moshe at minus one. In other words, they say he got to the 49th level. Actually, I think Rabbi Yaakov Yosef explains you know, once you get to the 49th level of understanding, this level of consciousness that Moshe reached, and you get to the 50th, so then obviously what happens is there's a whole other 49. In other words, the 50th gate of understanding is there's another 49 to go. And when you get to that 49 and you reach to that yeah, next one, the righteous have no rest in the next world. Have you ever heard that before? No rest for the righteous in the next world. And kind of some people who fear see, see that instantly go, that's freaky. That doesn't sound good. You mean no more, no golf? How about what? Because I'll be learning. What's the English equivalent of that? Place. No, I mean like... Chase, it's Seth. 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 Oh, we're talking about oh, Seth. Seth. Oh, Seth. Oh. Seth. Oh. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> sorry I didn't translate that. Oh. I Sometimes I miss it. Seth. Seth. Thank you. So Good for you. I wasn't Eve? sure if it was Shem. She, the mom There's of Seth is Eve. Child oh, I thought it was after Adam and Eve separated. <laughs> Adam and Eve separated yeah. for under 20 years. And then they got back. And then they got back together okay. and had she yeah. of Seth. Thank you. Okay? What is Pasuk? What? What is Pasuk or Pasuk? Pasuk means verse. Verse. So what's cooking with Moses now? Is he up there like a Metatron? Moses! Or is he getting reincarnated again? It's, listen, you know, <laughs> it's wild how, why Moses even had to die and he has a burial place and nobody knows where his Burns. burial place is, okay? Like, because, you know, you get Elijah, he, he, he morphed into an angel, but right? That, and uh, the Hanoch one. morphed into yeah. an angel, okay? Matat, Moshe, I guess, uh, no. The, the, the jobs were already filled for that those positions, and we don't need any more morphing, and there'll be no more morphing, and that's it. Except that for no you know who else how many morphed? Metatrons there are. You know, no, there's only just... one. Like, there's only one. <laughs> there's only one. Really They're all just the little juniors, ones. mini me's. Mini don't give me a mini me, okay? <laughs> Yet you made him only slightly less than angels, Melukim. Okay, Behine who shays atzmo kamo shisboer. So now here he springs down. He is Shays himself. So here you go, step two. Moshe, Moshe is a reincarnation of Seth. Seth. Um, okay? It's nice to know who's who in your Bible. 
Well, okay. Isn't there a book all about all this? Who's the reincarnation of who? It's like a little skinny yellow book. I got isn't it. it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But sometimes you get lost because really it brings down. <laughs> What's like, the name like of the book? It brings I don't down know. Down it's like a who you know book. who was a. It brings down the modern in 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 the um, whatever the way it was done. I would have appreciated it from the top down instead of the bottom up. I thought Abel, Moses, and Noah were all reincarnations of Abel. Well, Shays is Abel, oh. so Moshe is Abel. Why does he die? Okay. The evil of Hevel's nephesh is represented by the letters of Beit Lamed, Baal. Baal, which really is the secret of the verse, Pasuk, the verse means, such judgments they know not, not, Baal means means not. In other words, if people say, yeah, we'll go have lunch sometime, not, okay? <laughs> yeah, why so in Hebrew, you, that's that Baal, no sense. okay? <laughs> why do you say you're going to get together for lunch when no one has the intention of doing that? Well, okay, so whatever. It know. makes no that, sense. That's, that, 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 don't go tied on me, okay? Yeah. Don't go off the topic, okay? <laughs> okay, Leon. Okay, so Baal, base Lamed, which means literally not, okay? For these two letters refer to the Klipot and the base Lamed of Bilam, because Bilam's actually spelled with base Lamed Ayn Mem. That's how he is spelt. The base Lamed of Bilam. And they also the base Lamed of the word Hevel. He, Vet, Lamed spells Hevel, Abel. The He, Shays, he fixed it, or Hashem. The base Lamed went to Bilam. Okay, and Bilam had a opportunity. Oh, please, Hashem. When the opportunities present themselves to us to fix, please help us to take it. Okay. So Beis Lamed was Bilam. We mentioned before that even the level of evil that is separated from good must, by necessity, contain an element of holy sparks. Even the worst evil has good in it. Mm -hmm. Always. It won't exist. It cannot exist without a spark of holiness within it. And it has to be extracted. It has to be elevated. So this is the sod. Sod means secret, by the way. I still use the term soak in pattern or formula. Okay, when I say so, because when we say secret, it doesn't. It's hard for me to go ahead and pull that into our modern, um, modern Vernacular. understanding, right? So I used to use formula, pattern, or sometimes even the program if you really want to use get really out of the box. Bilam. Okay, so the vibration. This, okay, this is the sword of Bilam, the prophet, and what Chazal mean when they say that he was equal to Moshe, who was from the good of Shays, as we'll explain. So they say Shays, uh, uh, Moshe, and, and, and Bilam were kind of like together, right? They were equal in prophecy because they came from the same source, Hevel. Mm. The little amount of good that was in Bilam reincarnated into Naval HaKarmeli. Now, you might not know who Naval HaKarmeli was, okay? Right? Which was the beginning of the Tikkun, okay? In other words, he could have fixed Bil, uh, Naval. Naval actually is the same letters. Beit Lamed is in Naval, okay? Naval HaKarmeli was in King David's time. King David had his group of men around. They were great bodyguards and warriors protecting the farmers and the ranch, we'll call them ranch owners because we're in Texas, okay, from all of the, um, all of the, uh, all the gangs. There were Goyesha gangs, if I could say that, bands of men who would come with their horses marauding and pillaging and, 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 and attacking cities and villages and taking stuff. So David Amalek, it was a security he was making sure that the region around that area was secure and protected this guy, Naval, from many agents of harm. It came a time, a period of time, where King David says, listen, I need some provisions. And Naval said, go fly a kite, basically. Who's David? Right, I think it says it here, right? Bilaam's only, okay, it says it brings it later, right? He says later, who's David and who's Ben Ishai? I don't know any David. Mm. And David says, you ingrate. Um, that's it. So David load, basically loaded up his men and says, we're going to attack. We're going we're gonna to blow them away. Okay, for being an ingrate. And that's when Abigail, Novel's wife, came out in the middle of the night, put provisions on donkeys, loaded donkeys, went out to greet King David's army as it was coming. 
and greeted King David and says, here are your provisions, man. Just leave my husband alone. It happened to be Neville died that night of a heart attack. Okay? But, and he married Abigail, by the way. Okay? The little amount of good that was in Bilaam reincarnated into Neville HaKarmeli, which was the beginning of the Tikkun. Bilaam's only power was in his mouth. By speaking Lashon Hara and cursing, therefore, after Pinchas killed him, he reincarnated into a rock that could not speak. Right? To rectify the Lashon Hara that came from his mouth. Right? So if you, God says, this is what you were doing, now you're doing this. Okay? This is what you're now going to be doing, meaning rocks don't speak. Okay? Or do they? <laughs> well, you got to have some good ears there. <laughs> to rectify the Lushan Hara that came from his mouth, as we have said, so he became a rock, a person can reincarnate into domain, that means inanimate, someach, which means plant, chaya, which means animal, and medaber means speaking. Here, in the note here, literally silent, but it refers to the mineral world, something that sprouts is a vegetation world, that means what someach, Living refers to the animal world, and one who speaks refers to the human being. In other words, a person, not his entire soul, but elements of the person's soul that he did not fix, that he blew it, needs to come reincarnated into one of these elements and then work its way up. Okay? So you don't get to jump from mineral. It takes, you could actually, we have recorded some stories Last where one people can skip a step, but it requires a really. Is that Medaber means speaking. Oh, okay. uh, so, so in other words, if Bilaam, he got reincarnated into a rock, and he was there for several hundred years, mm-hmm. right? Feeling good, okay? Actually not, okay? Someone bought him as a pet in the 70s. A pet rock! <laughs> <laughs> My dad invented the pet rock before they came out with it. It was so wrong. <clears throat> He only had marketed that. <laughs> he did. He had a pet rock way before. <laughs> anyway, someone heard him at a party, I guess. <laughs> any case. Um, right. So, in any case, oh, the rock, in order to elevate, has to go from a plant. And then only from a plant, it gets eaten by an animal, and then the animal. And then from the animal, then you get to speaking. In other words, mm-hmm. you don't jump. Except for one guy, there was a story from you, Yehuda Fataya, mm-hmm. right, that where the guy was a pomegranate. Right, he was reincarnated into a pomegranate, and he says, "Wow, thank God, because uh, my next level was going to go to a speaking in- entity, right? No, oh, an animal. Mm-hmm. I had to go. I was going to be reincarnated in an animal. I was in line, right? I think that was going to. I think I saw on the charts there was going to be an armadillo, right? <laughs> that gets like run over by a truck. Good, after. so short reincarnation. <laughs> no, I had to be a full. It was a full size armadillo. It was going to be there to ten years. Right? I don't know how long armadillos." <laughs> Okay, how old they get. Anyways, uh, I was in line to be the armadillo, right, in South Texas, right? Um, it's expanded armadillo. But this guy that Sadiq bought me on Friday, and he made a Shekhiano on Shabbos' third meal on me, and I was able to skip a step, and I went right, right to speaking. Awesome. Okay? Of course, he blew it and did bad things when he was speaking, and that's why he, be, what he be, went into, had to possess somebody. Okay? In any case, side story. Okay. The idea here is, yes, it's true, the cat's out of the bag, reincarnation does occur, people can be reincarnated into rocks, or plants, or, uh, you know, live stock. And there was one great story with uh, the Babasali, right? He was in Morocco visiting his family, and all of a sudden, and, you know, and they, they begged him to stay for Shabbos, please stay for Shabbos. He said, no, I gotta go, I gotta... And then finally this goat busts in the living room, jumps on the table, and they do a stare down. Bubba Sali and the goat do like a like stare down, like kind of like this, right, for like a few minutes. And the Bubba says, I'll stay as long as we eat that goat. Because <laughs> that goat's a reincarnation of somebody, and he was like begging me for a tea. <laughs> so I said, okay. It's just like okay. when they say animals follow Cabrito's you, you're supposed good. to say forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. My dad, my father-in-law did that. With my, my daughter remembers a little walking in the park in Gan Soccer, and this cat was following them. And finally, my father-in-law turned around and went, Machulach, 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 meaning forgiven, 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 and then the cat split. 
Don't know. <laughs> now, but you can't go crazy with this. <laughs> People go crazy with this. I'm serious. You can't go crazy. The lit box will just tear you up to pieces with this, okay? You know what, lit, what I mean by a lit box? Okay? The, 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 the non Hasid, the misnagdim. Okay, we'll call them the misnagdim. Those are against the Hasidic thought, okay? Right. They'll tear you to pieces if you go like, no. Let that fly be in there. It's a reincarnation of someone. He has to hear Devar Torah. No, you can kill the fly if it annoys you, okay? Even though the Arizal would not curse a fly, okay? We're not on that level. If there's a mouse in your house, you get him out, okay? You don't go, no, it's my Aunt Mildred. She has to be here. No, you don't have to do that, okay? It's like there was some, I think, a high priest who sweep the uh, ground in front of where they walk so they wouldn't step on an insect. Where the high priest where? Uh, the Baha'i. I think Okay, okay. Baha'i Different religion, that? man. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. They're okay. really they go well, a little bit they, kooky yeah, there with the worms masks. are your are your grandparents and you right. can't mess with the worms and no we don't they wear masks we don't, don't go crazy like that. Be we believe in yeah. tikkun and if you have to kill the the rat Right. You gotta kill it's good. Right. It's good for the rat, it's good for you. Okay? <laughs> it's move on time. Okay, right. not preserve the worm that it lives right. for a thousand years. And it's cursing you and it's a little worminess. What? Damn, you kill me already. Yes, yeah, like <laughs> no. kill him, take me. I, I want to Hello. Me Wait. <laughs> Let's go next level. No, we must preserve the holy worms because they're <laughs> No, 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 no. We move on. We believe in moving on. Okay. You know, there was a baby mouse <laughs> in the torch. Yes, room, so, uh, if not several. And I, I know. Him, he looked back, he ran under the couch, <laughs> you know, and um, whoever was teaching the class went looking for him, but I don't know. He's hanging out. I don't know if he was a holy mouse. Listen, everything <laughs> needs its tikkun. We, right. we fix. Here we we believe in fixing. And move on. Somebody said okay. we had cockroaches here, but look, it had a tail, so it must have been. Now, <laughs> I don't know about cockroaches. I've heard one guy tell me who cockroaches are, and it's quite unique. Okay? <laughs> there was a people who used to call us cockroaches. Oh, the cockroaches. They are all reincarnated into cockroaches. That doesn't mean every cockroach is an ex Nazi. Okay? <laughs> 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 no, but this guy, this one guy in Israel told me they, but they have complete hakara, which means complete recognition of who they are, right? So they have complete awareness, and they are a cockroach. It's like, you mean, Hans Fritz, where are we going? What's that big shadow? Poor child, Hans Fritz. I know nothing. Oh, and then they get reincarnated again into more cockroaches. I don't know. I didn't see it inside. I need to hear from somebody, I need to hear from somebody very big. Take that, please, with a grain of salt. It's a new meaning to las cucarachas. <laughs> so, in any case, but... You understand everything God does is measure for measure. Okay? If you view them as, you know, some, you know, God forbid, we should, you know, you can't be condescending on any of God's creations. Anything. Everything has it exactly needs to be there for its proper tikkun. But that doesn't mean you don't get rid of damaging agents that are in your house. Okay? You take him out. Okay? You're not supposed to do it with cruelty. The pad, the sticky pads, we don't use because that's Tsar Bali Chaim which means it caused pain to an animal, which we still have to find out an answer to that huge question that you had, okay? Okay, let's go a little bit more, okay? Anyways, okay, however, when, du- when Navel followed in his ways, in other words, he spoke Lashon Hara, right? Because about King David, what did he say? Who is David and who is Ben Ishai? In other words, I don't know. Never helped me. He's Kfui Tov, one of the worst things you could do. And one of the greatest things that is a symbol of a Jew is always to recognize the good. Huge lessons in that. Huge, okay? At a, my, my Moshe Shiva did say, Adam Arishan was a kafui tov. Actually, Chazal says that. Kafui tov. What does it mean? He denies the good. Which means when he sinned in, in, in the tree of knowledge, right? And, you know, here's, you know, Adam, uh, sorry, God was doing his questioning, right? And he started with Adam. He said, Adam, what's going on? Come on, talk to me. Right? And Adam says, well, it's your fault because of that wife that you gave me. He blamed God. It was a faulty wife. You gave me a, 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 faulty, a faulty entity to be with. Right? That's when it, it was, that was, yeah, you deny, you deny the good. It was good. Okay? 
have, I have a question. Yeah. Is, who is Ben Ishai? Oh, Ben Ishai is, just means the son of David. Yeah, I know. The one so usually, ben, Ishai. When, ben, son of David, Ishai was David's father. Yeah. When we say, when we want to, when usually when they want to put someone down in biblical times, they will call him son of. Oh. When they want to put Moses down, they go, who is son of Amram? Oh, okay. The son of Amram. They always want to put somebody down, they do, will do that. Right. It's a way to put down, okay? Son of Yishai, right? He reversed <laughs> the people. I heard that. I'm glad. It, I hope I didn't get on that. But that's good. I'm glad you did that. It was perfect. It was, it was perfect. Not only did he not rectify the previous sin, but he added to the damage because what? He spoke bad about the Mashiach. Therefore, it says, and he was a rock. I think he get reincarnated into a rock again, back into the rock. Okay? Since his mazel saw how previously he had reincarnated into a silent stone, and then what happens with Naval, his heart died within him. Okay? So thus, the good nefesh of Hevel was given to Shays, who completely rectified it. The evil nefesh of Hevel, which still had holy sparks, and it reincarnated into Bilam, and then into Naval. Thus, the letters of Beis Lamed are in Naval, as well as, right? As well. After the nefesh was completely rectified, it was then possible to rectify the Ruach. The Ruach was from the, what we call the six extremities. These are the six Sfirot. Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, and Hod, and Yesod, which is, includes them all. These are six lower Sfirot, right? Which are included in three lines, right, left, and middle. This refers to the order in which the Sfirot are set up. Okay, this is all Kabbalistic stuff. Those who know will, will know. Okay, the Ruach reincarnated into... Noach HaTzadik. I was always looking for that in a source because people told me for a long time. Okay? Noach was the level of emanation of the six extremities of Tiferes. Okay? Right? Tiferes has his own set of ten spherot and the Noach's soul was from these six extremities, Chesed through Yesod. Okay? We won't get into that. The idea here is, just stop here. So we have the Nefesh, uh, we have Hevel. Hevel reincarnated into Shes. And the bad part went into Bilaam and Nabal. But the good part went into Moshe. Interesting. Now that was just the Nefesh. Who is the Ruach? The Ruach, actually, it's weird because in time sequence it doesn't seem to jive, is Noach. Noach and Moshe are connected. Okay? And the Ruach was connected? Was... Level 2 soul was Noach, of Hevel. Oh. Level 2 soul of of level two soul of Hevel was Noah. Noah. Oh, okay. So Noah, so reincarnation of Hevel was also Noah. So we have here a string here that we're getting. We'll stop here. Was, was basically the string is Hevel, Shase, Noah, and Moshe. Okay? So we understand now who was the reincarnation of who and who is fixing who. It's interesting how Noah and Moshe do go together. Because Noah, really, interestingly enough, all the years that he was building the ark, never prayed for the generation to come back. He was building them, and Noah, he was building an ark for 120 years, right? Um, that people should see and take notice, like, what are you building this for? Because there's going to be a flood. But he didn't pray for them. Only after he gets out of the ark, right, does he say, right? Does he say, oh, please, God, don't bring this upon anybody again? And he says, and God goes, Nuck, you know, knucklehead. Now you're praying for them? <laughs> All before you didn't. All while you're building the ark, you didn't pray for them. So here's Moshe does the tikkun. And when Moshe goes in, in the sin of the golden calf and all the other places, right? Moshe steps forward and prays for them like crazy. Because, listen, he, he says to, to, God says to Moshe a couple of times, he says, you know, let's just knock them out. And we'll start from you, a new nation, a new business. You'll be the CEO of a new corporation, right? New business, right? And Moshe says, no, we got to stick with them. So here he is the opposite. And he prays constantly for them, okay? So it's kind of like the rectification on a, a higher level. Okay? We'll stop here. Thank you. Are we doing Thursday night? Thursday night is going to be now. I'm going to be starting Thursday night at uh, Missouri City. We're doing the Baal Shem Tov. We're going to the Master of Masters. That's how you started already? No. 
That's in two weeks. Is that the one about September. The, the dead horse? I like the horse was walking because he owed someone money and then like... A lot of stories of the Baal Shem Tov. That one's a little bit, uh, yeah, that, somewhat familiar, but I don't know if it was a dead horse. Because dead horses usually don't walk. Yeah. Well, it was a living horse, and after they forget the horse. Yes, there's a lot of stories like that. But we're going to be doing his Torah, the Torah of the Baal Shem, who was the founder of the Hasidic movement. Is he like the grandpa or grandson of Rechabla? Who? The great grandfather. Oh, the Baal Shem Tov was.